Thanks. Firstly, I'm Sam Matthews, as he just mentioned, and uh, I started out firstly as a hardcore gamer myself. Um, I played a lot of uh, Counter Strike, and uh, you know, Quake was my main game. Sort of, okay. Um, just what I thought, you know, my nickname was Zorro. I thought I was going to get the ladies back in the day. You know, I was 14, so, uh, you know. And then I decided at university, well, why not start a gaming company? It's my hobby. And that's pretty much what I did at the time. I was playing a lot of games. And uh, I figured, well, gaming team seems like a good idea. And having no idea what business was, I ended up creating uh, Fnatic, which it ended up being the world's number one professional video gaming team. What that means is we basically get sponsors to pay our players who go around traveling around the world, Korea, Moscow, and play games for a living. It's basically a dream job, and I get to manage that. So that's, that's the team, and this is one of our guys in Paris. Um, you can see there's, a, there's quite a big crowd there on TV. It's, it's, it's quite a fun thing. However, and this is my second company. I created this recently. This is Ugame. It's a gaming social network. Um, so I, I'm very much a hardcore gamer, and that's what I'm coming to talk to you about is what I've learned through hardcore gaming and what are the aspects that keep games so um, longevity, essentially, because unlike social games, there's, a, there's quite a lot to learn from these hardcore games because you've got games that last for 10, 10 years or so and still have that hundreds of thousands of players. So first, just some key stats. 62% of all gamers play online. So that, that, that has been growing at huge amounts in the last years, and that's something which you have to keep in mind. Um, and of those, PC is still by far the main platform. And obviously, that, that, th those PC gamers are the ones that are also playing casual games and hitting the Facebook audience. This is one of the things that led me to building the social media gaming network was the fact that 32% of all online gamers say the reason why they play online games is actually because of the social interaction. It's because they want to go out and meet people. They want to, you know, and get rewarded. So some, quickly, some popular hardcore games and why they've been popular and, and how long they've been popular for. One of, one of the uh, oldest but most well-known that has been played for many years is Counter-Strike. It's actually started as a beta uh, mod for Half-Life 2. And still to this day, 10 years after becoming a beta, it's still got 100,000 concurrent gamers at any one point in, during the day. Um, uh, I'll, go, I'll go more later why I, th why I think this is the case and how, how it actually came to be. Um, obviously, more well known to, to more of the recent gamers as well, the Warcraft, a highly addictive crack-like game. Um, and it, it, again, it's got 11.5 million monthly subscribers, and that's just enormous amounts of revenue. So why do, why do I think these? Uh, OK, so this is another one. Quake Live is a good example of a game. It's, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's come from Quake 3, which is a very old game. They've essentially morphed Quake 3 into an online social interaction, social network, and have already, in a matter of six months, added 500,000 gamers to that game. Um, it's a very unique model, and it's something that I think when Quake Live, for example, can get embedded into Facebook and, and you can have 3D games in Facebook, that's where these things are going to be going. This is a very good example to keep an eye on. So wh what keeps us itching? Why, why are we addicted to these games, these online hardcore games? Firstly, one of the most important things is balance. These games you have multi often have multiple classes, multiple races, groups, teams. And the, the thing is you never want to have one team which overpowers another team because of the nature of the game itself. You always want to ha give every ch player the equal chance at succeeding. Um, I think that's so just as important when you're actually building a Facebook game. Um, next up is status. I mean, everybody knows it, it's game mechanics. When you, when you build a game and you give people the ability to raise their e-penis, um, <laughs> they, they, they essentially, uh, you know, it, it gives them a reason to play the game and, keep, and you have people like this guy over here who uh, is a geek king. <laughs> um, but, you know, going ne next off, this status leads to the reward system. So you have things like um, experience levels in World of Warcraft where you're, the more you play, the more bosses you kill, the more rewards you get. And those rewards actually le lead you want to play on, get to that next level, because the greater, the, the greater you play, the, build, the higher status you get, the more, more rewards you get. Um, and again, all these things, I think, can be taken easily into Facebook games. Um, so one of the, the reason, one of the key things when building a game these days 
is really to get that instant satisfaction right out of the gate. You want to have the ability in Counter-Strike, you, you walk into a game and, and you can still have a chance of getting a, a lucky headshot. Um, and then going on to uh, you know, World of Warcraft, you can, you can start off at the base level and there's something for you to do, something for you to, to um, instantly do. But the reason why they stay big games and stay, they, they carry on being 10 years afterwards is the fact that it takes a long time to master these games. So for example, Quake, you may be able to go in and shoot and kill somebody, but you won't know how to strafe jump. Or in World of Warcraft, you won't know how to throw a lightning bolt through your ass or something, you know. <laughs>